Humanoid183 writes, this goes back to something from your book. So in the section titled Justice, you mentioned the correct form of paying debts for a crime is to make the victim whole. Who judges the idea of an appropriate compensation and makes sure the person actually fulfills the duty of making the victim whole? So just to be clear, I want to go back before I continue on reading the question here, what Humanoid 183 is referencing here, because this is a very important part of the book that, and a very important part of understanding the message of freedom. I reference this on a, on a regular basis, that there's a difference between punishment and justice. Now, in a system of justice, if there is no victim, there is no crime. End of story. You cannot punish someone for just doing something that you didn't like. And so punishment is criminal because it is anti-justice. This is what the drug war is, is just the greatest obscene example of, right? The government says, well, you smoked a plant that, that we don't agree with you smoking, therefore we're going to lock you in a cage. We are punishing you because we want to control you, because we didn't like your behavior. Uh, we're, we might even use it as an excuse to steal from you and fine you and make you fee, pay court fees and other costs associated with your punishment. And the sad thing about this is, is that it's a double injustice because the taxpayers are punished as taxpayers to pay for the punishment of someone who hasn't even committed a crime. And I'd like to, to share a little bit of a, of a personal story with this. When I got back from Iraq and had, had that sweet, sweet government deployment money, uh, I bought a motorcycle. And the motorcycle was stolen from in front of my dorm room in Claremont, California. And the guy who stole it, uh, he cut the straps with a razor or some kind of knife. The, the helmets were strapped, uh, the straps were locked into the, the back of the motorcycle. He used a screwdriver, jammed it in the ignition, was somehow able to, uh, to pick the ignition that way. And he was caught uh, a few days later on a high-speed chase with his girlfriend on the back without helmets on. And the bike had been just ravaged, savaged, trashed. And I got to pick it up from an impound yard, took it to a mechanic, got an estimate for the damages for $6,000, went to court on the day that he was there, got a, a successful judgment of restitution against this man for the $6,000 in damages. The prosecuting attorney was very helpful in this. But at the end of it, at the end of it, she said, don't expect to see much money out of this. She didn't tell me, expect to be punished as a California taxpayer all the more because now you're going to pay for this person to be clothed, housed, fed, and taken care of in every way that the prison system can find an excuse to rip you off with. But he will be released without having done anything to make you whole as a victim. So we have a very ineffective, inefficient system with government for making victims whole. So how would a stateless society provide for better means of accountability? I guess I should go back to the question. If no one is enforcing the laws, how would people make sure they pay the appropriate compensation? Also, what is an appropriate compensation? Does the victim decide or is there like a rule that lists it? Last question, wouldn't this just make it to the point where the rich can get away with anything since they can pay it all and the poor are left not being able to? Now that, that also raises a very good question at the end there. But first, the ultimate answer is let the market decide. So, for example, if we have a world where insurance companies or dispute resolution organizations, DROs, are handling such transgressions, if something is stolen from me, uh, it gets replaced. Uh, as the victim, I am made whole by my insurance company. The insurance company then gets to take the claim against the perpetrator of this crime and do whatever they are contractually obligated to do in that situation. So say, the, say it's my neighbor. My neighbor breaks into my house, steals my TV. Now, because of all these safeguards and mechanisms in place, it's just such a silly, unrealistic scenario. Uh, you know, he, he would have to be high off his ass and you know, doing some really bad, dangerous drug like alcohol or something like that, where he's so lost control that he thinks he's going to walk into the, my house and steal my TV and take it back and not be noticed because, you know, we've got security cameras up. And he's identified, and so my insurance company right away goes, hey, Mr. Krokosh, here's your new TV. Cost of getting you the new TV is now part of our claim against the perpetrator here. So we go to him, and he goes, 
uh, well, yeah, I did it. I'm sorry. Uh, here's the TV back. And you know, what do I have to pay to make it, make it right? And generally it's going to be covering the costs of the recovery, the new TV and the insurance company handling all this. And it might be done through their company. It might be through the same company. There might be uh, a, a huge variety of choices that you get to pick from in who you turn to for these protection, insurance, and dispute resolution services. It could be that there's a conglomerization effect and that they're consolidated under a single company. And so it's much easier to have these things resolved, but it is gonna be decided in advance by the market, by what people demand from these protection services and what that's gonna mean for people who need that compensation. So whether it's from uh, your insurance company, a fellow insurance company, all of these things will be more or less determined in advance as opposed in, in, in terms of what is appropriate com compensation. And of course, this is uh, opposed to how government does it, sort of ex post, pac ex post facto shooting from the hip without an agreed upon standard of what that compensation should be. So in different situations, you're gonna see much more complex things like in cases of, of someone being violently assaulted but all of these will be laid out in terms in advance by these insurance companies that, that are providing those services based on what the market demands. So who fulfills the duty of making the victim whole? If the person doesn't have an insurance company, then you get into some other trickier situations. Who's gonna do it? But ultimately it still comes down to the market deciding. So if your neighbor steals your TV and they go, oh yeah, shoot, my bad, uh, here's, the old, here's the TV and my insurance rates go up, well then that's how they pay for it and they are still uh, accepted in the market as a good actor, as someone who takes responsibility for any transaction transgressions or damages that they might be responsible for. And if someone is without an insurance company, they are essentially an, an outlaw uh, by in, in, in legal terms as someone who is not given the protection of society. And if they violate someone and, and make their victim whole and people are able to see that, then maybe that's all it takes for them to be someone who can be you know, dealt with under normal circumstances. But if they run away and say, screw you, well, we will have mechanisms of holding those people accountable by not doing business with them. And it's that economic ostracization that is the ultimate measure that is a peaceful mechanism of holding people accountable for their transgressions that is far superior to anything that we have with the violent coercive mechanisms that we get through government. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.